Nathan Cavallari, welcome back to Australian Musician. Mate, happy to be here. Hey, last time uh, we spoke was during lockdown. Uh, your album yes. Demons was just about to come out. Uh, the new album uh, Miracles is out now. Were any of these songs uh, also written during that period? Uh, no, actually, pretty much everything was written after Demons. A part of it was uh, just sort of on the other side of of COVID. I did, have, however, have one song that I had uh, had written in 2012 called Dry Ice. And, you know, when you write songs, you know, they, the ones that you don't use just kind of fade and they become a memory. And But then others will just keep floating to the surface. And, uh, and that's a cue to sort of pay attention and, and work out why. <laughs> and um, I, it's, I'm really gl- glad that I ended up putting that, that song on the album. Yeah. Uh, Querencia is the opening track, a very cruisy rock and tune. Uh, what or who is uh, Querencia? Well, yeah, uh, Querencia is a, a, a concept that I came across when I, because I follow this, this uh, lady called Tara Brock, who uh, is a, a psychologist uh, background sort of in, in Buddhist uh, psychology. And she was referencing this concept, Carencia, which originally comes from bullfighting, uh, obviously a terrible sport, but it's a, it's a part of the arena that the bull marks out, becomes obvious, uh, where it's 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 place where it goes to almost like a, a mini refuge. It's like a place where it goes within itself to regain energy, to rest, uh, to feel calmer. Uh, it generally has its back to the wall and it's uh, it's known as being one of the most da- dangerous times to tease or taunt or attack a bull. And then moving into that concept when it comes to humans uh, is that home, uh, that philosophy of having home and peace and refuge just within yourself despite what's going on around you. And I've just found that such a liberating concept and, with my challenges when it comes to mental health, I have recognized how much of my own personal, you know, and emotional pains can come from just what's going on in here and and very little to do with what's outside. So that's a a space that I try to get to as much as possible. Cool. Um, There's a bit of a Knopfler guitar vibe uh, in that track. Uh, Did you use Fernandez Strat that he gave you on that track? I, not on that track, but I did use it. Uh, I forget which tracks, but I, I used it a few times uh, on on this album. It's 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 great that you reference Nofla because I like one of my first loves for music, um, and I would say almost my first love was Dire Straits, and very close to that was obviously the blues music. As to when I got introduced, and that's well and truly in my DNA. Uh, but what I loved about Di- the work of Dire Straits and Nofla is that despite him being the guitarist that he is, he's an artist. He, he releases music songs, you know, it's not just about the guitar. It's using the guitar and other elements to create a feeling or or a, a, a story or whatever it is. So I feel like my whole life I've been working towards creating my own version of that. That is by using whatever elements I can to, um, you know, to, to inspire a feeling or inspire a message. And, you know, for a long time, I just had the skills as a guitar player, but bit by bit over the years, I've, you know, um, done a lot of work on my vocals and production and mixing and songwriting. And I feel like this album uh, is, is now all of that coming together. And it was just hard not to be influenced by Dire Straits on this album. Yeah. Is the track sequence of an album important to you? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's obviously, you know, people don't necessarily listen to it from start to finish these days like they used to, Um, but it's an album, you know, like if you're going to put it in that format, then at least make the, you know, the experience of listening to it from start to finish an enjoyable one. I I had really hard troubles deciding on an order for this song, uh, for this album. It, It took me, it was probably one of the hardest things I had to do throughout the whole creative process was just deciding on the order because it's also a a time like 
the order is is generally the last thing that you decide on before you hand it over to the label. So it kind of gets all tied up in in the pressure of 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 putting something out. That last thing you don't want to stuff up and undo all the work that you've done over the last year by just choosing a bad order, and then people can't you know, get into the flow of one song because the song before it kind of put them in a different headspace or whatever it is, you know. Um, but yeah, no, it definitely, definitely is very important. Yeah. Uh, why did Miracles become the title track? I just felt like it sort of summed up the space that I was in when I created the album. It was, it's, you know, the sentiment of the song is definitely not, it, it doesn't, you know, it's not tying the whole album together in relation to the other topics necessarily, but it's more, it's more of a, a lesson at that time in my life when I created the album as a whole that um, helped to anchor me during lots of different, you know, challenges that I was going through, um, whether it was COVID or, or, you know, going, facing my demons when going back out on the road again. And, and I mean, to, to sum it up, that miracles was just, it's kind of like I keep coming back to that as a reminder of all the good things that the unknown can reveal, you know, by reminding yourself of all these unexplainable things that happen in our daily life, even the simple things from the fact that I woke up this morning and I can, I'm still breathing to, of course, my, my children being born. I mean, that's an incredible miracle and one of the biggest miracles for me. Uh, and we, I put that, um, a photo of that on the front cover. You know, that's my that's my first being born. <laughs> um, there's such a diversity of styles on the album. Um, is that the way you planned it to showcase the different uh, shades of your music? Wasn't intentional. You know, if I got to the end of the album and I'm like, "Wow, that's all rock" or "It's all blues" or whatever, then it it is what it is. I think uh, I've always been somebody who who um, can be moved by lots of different um types of music so it's 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 natural like that that subconsciously i just have quite a a wide like scope of genres that seem to move me so that when i am creating music i'm drawing on lots of different parts of that of my subconscious mind to create that feeling and i, I um you know when i created this album it was about embracing you know whatever those styles are that move me to create something you know i'd like to think that um that blues as much as what it goes beyond the blues that 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 still seems to be a bit of a, a an anchor throughout the whole album uh more obvious in uh than in some songs than than others um uh, but you know we lean towards indie and then sometimes the alternative and and there seems to be a rock there as well so uh yeah not not an intention it's just how it happened yeah um there's a range of guitar tones uh, throughout the album we're using stomp boxes or did you go digital effects with this or actually i and it's hard for me to say this because i'm a i consider myself like a purist where i was like ah you know digital you know the just the, the physical stuff is better than the digital i uh, this album was about challenging any Pre any of my preconceived ideas, any of the beliefs that I felt like were limiting me, and I just did what works. And there are a lot of songs on there where the amp is completely digital, and then there are other songs on there where I've used the amps that are in the room. Uh, most of the mixing, because I mixed the album um, with the help, um, it was overseen by uh, Andrew Andrew Sheps, who's done lots of different mixes from Chili Peppers to Adele to Kaleo to you know Michael Jackson and. You know, he was, he's the master for me and it was a real dream to work with him. And he had that philosophy as well as this doesn't matter how you get that sound. You know, if it works, it works. You know, if it's digital, it's digital. If it's analog, it's analog. It doesn't matter. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, have you acquired any new guitars that you used on this one? I know you were looking at buying a, a jazz master last time we spoke. Oh yes. Correct. No, I didn't end up, uh, uh, buying a jazz master, but, uh, what did I, I ended up, well, I ended up building a, a CUDA caster um, made from a mid eighties uh, Tokoi uh, made in Japan Strat. Um, 
And I, I had full intentions of using that on the album and, and it finished getting made like literally when I created the last song. So, <laughs> um, but I used, yeah, lots of different guitars. I mean, my go-tos with the Telecaster, with the PAF up the front um, and my 335, but I used the Harmony, the old 60s Harmony on it. And, and the Strats actually ended up coming out a bit on this album. I haven't played, Strats haven't really been a sound for me since probably the, yeah, the late nineties. And I don't know, all of a sudden I'm just enjoying that Strat sound again. So you, you, you hear that a fair bit on this album. Yeah. Are you going out on the road uh, with such a diverse sounding album? Does that mean you have to take a whole bunch of guitars out? With you? <laughs> I am a minimalist on the road. I, I just, you know, I get all wound up and stressed when I've got too much, you know, crap, you know, at my feet. And although that I've, my what's happening at my feet at the moment with pedals and stuff seems to be growing. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, I, the less is more for me. And I, uh, I just go with my Telecaster and my three, three, five seems to cover, you know, is, is, um, yeah, cover, yeah. Do all the jobs. Well, I think I would love to travel with, you know, about four or five guitars. I don't know how diesel does it you know, with his solo, he's just, you know, when he travels as a solo artist, it's him and, and was a, um, but he still brings a whole heap of guitars. I just, yeah, (laughs) I think I, as soon as I've got, uh, we've got enough for a a roadie and a stage manager, then I'll make it their problem. All right, boys, we're bringing five guitars on the road. And (laughs) Um, it's quite an extensive tour that you're uh, about to undertake. Um, Take, it goes through to the end of the year. Do you enjoy the the long drives between towns and who's in charge of the uh, playlist? Is that uh, democratic? Yeah, yeah, it can be. I mean, right, like at this point, we've we've all got we're very like compatible with our what we like. I mean, some of us kind of run a little hotter than others. So you know, if I'm in the back and I just want to chill out, I'm I'm I, I like I enjoy a, a nice chill. You know, sometimes I just don't want to listen to Motley Crue or Faith No More. And, you know, but sometimes I do. I'm in the mood. So there's a bit of those conversations. But, no, I, I do enjoy the drives. I, um, yeah, given my history, touring uh, by nature, I, I have to face a lot of fears um, for experiences that have happened on the road. Uh, but I, I also recognise that I can't truly be in the moment, enjoying an experience for what it is. If I'm still swept up in a version, in a story that I've been telling myself in the head, that's to do with the past. So it's a constant thing for me to keep bringing myself back down to reality. And when I get there, I create new experiences. And that's when I can really truly feel the beauty in, in those long drives, you know, and we did a lot of that in Western Australia. I mean, we were driving on an average between six to eight hours the day of a gig. I mean, there was one big drive that we did up north from, uh, I think it was from Caratha to Broome, and that was a 10-hour drive uh, for us the day of a gig. And uh, But it went well. Besides, we we almost ran out of fuel uh, in, in the middle of the desert. That was, that was an experience. <laughs> Um, but it's it's an adventure and I mean that there's a song called Broken Lines that's on the album and it's actually a reminder of that very thing is all the amazing experiences and the personal growth that happens uh, when you travel and it's something that should be embraced. Yeah. So the tour goes uh, virtually to the end of the year. Uh, how's your 2024 looking? 2024 is, you know, there's definitely stuff bubbling away. We're just setting some te- in intentions at the moment. Uh, I really hope to be touring New Zealand next year because we did a, a couple of gigs supporting a band called Kaleo uh, in Auckland. And that's my first experience with um, the people from New Zealand. And, and oh, wow. Like they, they're they by nature really hungry for music. And and I, I feel like there's, there's definitely some energies that um, would work well there if we toured New Zealand. So I'd love to be able to tour New Zealand if it's right. And, uh, and then hopefully, depending on how this tour goes, I'd love to return to a lot of these places with a full band, uh, a full band, because we're still scaled down, even though it's very electric, um, they're smaller, intimate size venues. And, but I'd, I'd love to do this whole thing with, with, with the full band for sure. 
So the album Miracles is out now. We can catch you on the road uh, all around Australia. Uh, Nathan Cavalier, it's been great to catch up again. Thanks, mate. It's good to see you again.